So we've been really hyping up AI and, and trying to tell you all the cool, great, fantastic things it's doing. But we do need to manage our expectations. You know, this is just another tool and, and it's not a replacement for humans. You know, similarly, when, when a calculator came along, it's just another tool that makes you a lot more efficient, but it's not going to completely replace what you're doing. Um, think about it as I like to think about it as a, you know, my intern over here. I've got this, this intern who is not, you know, hasn't really been in the working world for that long, um, but I can give her a task and, and, and she could do, you know, most of the things pretty good, especially, you know, the, the, the simpler tasks. Um, and then I don't have to spend my time worrying about that. Um, and, you know, even if it makes you 25%, 40%, 50% more efficient, and you have to just check a few things, it is, it's still giving you a lot of, of increase in productivity, but it is not a replacement. Um, you need to understand its limitations. So <clears throat> it will hallucinate. So you do have to check it, um, which means it makes it, that's another thing to consider when planning for a, a system level rollout. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, we're, we're, we're trying to have it read award information or read um, contracts, pull out terms and conditions that, that we may need to redline or we may need to alter or create alternate clauses. I think Lori mentioned this in her negotiation side of things. Um, you're not just going to take that as it is. So you need to have some way of vetting that before it then gets you know, to wherever it needs to, where its final location is. Um, same thing with award notices. You know, if we're getting award notices in from NSF or, or some other agency, that all comes in an attachment and email. Well, we can use AI to read that information and to automatically pop our, populate our ERA systems with that. So nobody has to manually type that information in. But realistically, you're going to want to vet that information before it goes in because you don't know if it has pulled that information correctly. Maybe at one sponsor word, worded things a little bit different and it got confused. But so you need to have kind of a, a human in the loop. That's what you always need right now. Anyway, these things are obviously getting a lot, lot better um, and improving, I, I know, every day. Um, but right now you still need to have that oversight. Um, and a lot of people think, especially some leadership, that AI is like this instant gratification, you know, we're going to use AI and everything's going to be better. Well, it still takes a lot of resources and a lot of training and a lot of, you know, trying to, to think about what's going to happen before you can even start to integrate AI. Um, we have got so many AI projects going on right now, but they do take a lot of time. It is not this instant transformation, like we like we say, it's a gradual integration. Um, start slowly, start with a low hanging fruit first. You know, I think that's always a good good practice. And as you build up your skills and, and your knowledge, you may see different areas where you can where you can leverage it to gain efficiencies. Um, and and these, like I said, these things are training. These things are changing constantly. So you need to have this regular training. You need to have updates. Um, we've we've got AI committees, both our departmental level and on the campus level. Um, department being sponsored programs administration, um, and we're trying to put together this these training programs um, because these things are changing. You know, I can tell you to do one thing with AI right now, but then, you know, six months from now, the whole game changes because a new model came out and it's able to do something else much better. And, and that's a better way of doing it. So, so keeping up to date with it and, uh, you know, subscribe to some newsletters, subscribe to, you know, some LinkedIn learning or something like that, just to keep, keep up to date. I know it, it's hard sometimes to keep up to date with technology, but 
but it will it will help you understand where we're going and where we've been. Anything else? Do you have anything to add on that, Lori? No, I, I think the only thing I'd add is, you know, like like you said, we it, it's not a replacement for humans. And one of the things that I always say, and I'm sure Dan does too, when I'm especially when I'm talking to leaders, is that AI is not a cost cutting tool. Um, what what I think the opportunities are in AI is making making our jobs interesting and freeing up time to do deeper work. So, you know, doing doing things that these tools are very, very good at that can be done uh, simply is the wrong word, but are, are more straightforward that the, where the output is more straightforward, like reviewing contract language that's the same over and over again, reviewing things that are the same that otherwise a person would have to do. And it takes more time. Like if we if we can get those things right, then the staff you have can do deeper work, can do things that are more satisfying to them personally and professionally, and frankly, have better jobs. I don't, I don't see this as a way to say someone's going to come and replace people because it just isn't. 